my god, hi! How are you? I bet your nails look wonderful. And if they don't, they will after you watch this video. Today I'll be showing you how to create some roses and daisies, both of which are beginner friendly. I promise the roses look way harder than they actually are. And we'll go through it step by step. So we're going to start off with the rose set with a nice sheer pink color. And since it's so sheer, I actually had to do four coats of it. I think one of the most important things about this design is that you have a white color that is super pigmented so that you don't have to go over it twice and a brush that is not too thin so the petals basically create themselves. So the first step is to draw a really tiny U shape, kind of like a horseshoe or like a nasty little worm or something. And then we're going to go in and put kind of like brackets on either side of that little horseshoe kind of uh give it a little give it a little hug don't be afraid don't be shy just snuggle right up next to it and it doesn't really matter where you place these ones just as long as there's one on either side you can even do three or more but we're we're keeping it pretty basic now the third and pretty much final step is just draw a bunch of bananas this is the part where having the right brush will really help you. It'll make this like 10 times easier than it already is. And remember, wherever you place your brush down first is the thickest part. And wherever it ends will be the thinnest. So we'll always start in the middle of each petal and flick out. Then mirror that same motion for the other half of the petal. And now the fourth and final step is lay bricks. I know what you're thinking. You're not in it for manual labor. That's why you have your nails done, so that you can get out of anything when someone asks you to lift something heavy. But we have to lay some bricks now for these roses, and it'll be worth it this time. It will. So wherever the opening between your last row of petals was is where you're gonna place the next petal. Seriously, the rose builds itself. It tells you exactly where it needs another petal. So as you work outwards, I'm going to put two more petals because that's where there were two openings. And then I'm going to put another one on top where the opening between those ones are. And as I'm working out from the center, I try to make them a little bigger and like fatter than the other ones just to give it a little more depth so they're not all the same size. But you definitely don't have to do that. I only did it very subtly here. And... I try to add a little more petals out towards the edge, so sometimes I'll add a random one here and there. But honestly, if you follow the lay bricks rule, it'll turn out gorgeous. And as you keep going, if you find there's a bare spot or anything, you can always just add another one in. I mean, roses aren't perfectly symmetrical or even, so you can kind of just fill it in wherever you think you need it. So we're just going to do all of that one more time. So I'm starting with our little horseshoe, just for good luck, and giving it a nice little hug with our parentheses around each side of it. Then start with our little bananas. Thank you. 
and continue with the brickwork. I thought I'd add some of this super classy, extra sparkly, snowy white glitter from Etsy to the middle finger just to add, you know, a little jazz. So we smother it in some top coat and just take out your frustrations. Smear its little nail face in the dirt. Then smack it upside the head like you wanted to do to those kids in high school who thought disrespecting substitute teachers was cool. And just for fun, drop what you're doing so you have to spend the next five minutes picking lint out of it. Again, just for fun, totally optional. A little more of an advanced technique, I would say. Then pat, pat, pat all of that glitter into the top coat. And voila, you can give that a cure. And I'm gonna quickly just take my file along the edges so there's no loose little bits hanging off. Just waiting to snag that new sweater you bought. You can attack the surface of that with a manicure brush just to get any loose little bits off. And here's how they're looking and we are ready for our top coat. And I'm just going to apply this normally to all of the nails except the one with the glitter. Uh, I would not ever top coat white um, or black glitter. It totally takes the sparkle away and black turns to what looks like asphalt and <laughs> the if you top coated a glitter that looked like this one, it would just turn to like a blob. Now we'll get going on the daisies and this is probably the easiest flower you can do. But again, if you don't have the right brush, it will be harder. Just if you like anything, any nail art or hand painting, just buy a good brush. Cause if you buy cheap, you buy twice. Now we're gonna do a technique I just decided to call the dye technique. And no, I don't want you to stop living. I am referring to a dye as in like a pair of dice and specifically the five side. So right now that is exactly the pattern I'm drawing is like the side of the dye that is number five. The first dot you put should always be the one that's closest to the edge of the nail just so you ensure that it doesn't uh, slip off the side so it's not hidden. You want the full flower to be on there. And the center of the five is going to be the center of your flower. So keep that in mind when you're doing that. And then I'm just going to add extra dots in between all of the other ones we place. So now we have eight little dots and we're going to connect them all using the center dot as our guide. and just. Pull all of the dots using your brush into the center and you shouldn't have to add any extra paint on your brush like the dots that we placed are usually enough product but of course you can always go in if you need to. Now that we have our oh so beautiful dotty liney mess we're gonna make it look a little bit more like a flower. Now all you have to do is kind of uh, blend the transition between the dot and the line. 
and that's all there is to it. That's, you just have petals now. I know, it's some Chris Angel stuff. You might be thinking to yourself, wow, was that really magic? Is magic real? But no, that was all you. You drew that flower. So just keep blending that transition. And of course you can do this with different size brushes and dotting tools if you want bigger flowers or smaller flowers or if you want less or more petals. But that's just, that's the foundation of it. So you can tweak it as you want or copy it just like this. Just keep going in and just tweak them until you're happy with everything and give it a cure. But if you're not liking something, there's a super easy way to clean it up. I wouldn't recommend going in with a cleanup brush, but a silicone tool works amazing because it won't make anything spread or bleed. It'll only wipe away the parts you want. So I think I made my center a little too thick so I'm just taking the tool and scraping away what I don't want. And the middle doesn't have to look perfect, it just, I thought it got a little lopsided in my attempts to uh, clean everything up. So I just pulled it back where I wanted it. And uh, that's it. The silicone tool is my favorite thing to use as opposed to a cleanup brush because it just, it doesn't mess everything up surrounding where you want to clean. But yeah, after you're done with all your petals, you can just go in with whatever color you want as the center of your flower. You can go with a classic yellow. I went with a pink just to match the other nails. And voila! I just went in and top coated those. And here are both of the sets all finished up together. I think they are super cute. And they look way more complicated than they actually are. So try it. I dare you. You know, no, I double dog dare you. And if you did, leave a comment below. Let me know how it went. Was it an epic fail or did I make everything easy enough? Is there anything that you struggle with or absolutely despise doing? Let me know down below and maybe I'll uh, whip something up for that topic.